Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us on this January 3rd of 2021. We have made it to the new year. I hope you are uh, had a good Christmas and New Year's. Um, I didn't make it up till midnight. I never do these days. Um, I go to bed kind of early. Wish I had the energy. Can't do it. Um, but uh, still uh, wonderful to be a part of this new year. Behind me, of course, is the beautiful snow. Uh, and if you've been here in Nebraska this week, you know we got a big snow. And uh, it is just gorgeous all around right now and thick snow and uh, the trees and everything. It's just it's very pretty. Um, well, we have a new year and new year always means a little bit of new beginnings. You know, maybe you can even think a little bit about your life and some of the things that uh, you feel like you'd like to, to begin again with. You know, we always do those kind of things, New Year's resolutions. I always, you know, think about my relationship with God, where I'm at, and different things that I maybe have gotten slack in and want to, to again, get more disciplined in. And maybe that's something you think about this day as well. Um, but uh, glad that you are with us as a part of this church and uh, glad that you are joined us this morning. Um, a couple of announcements. One is that next Sunday uh, we begin our Sunday school and confirmation and all those classes at church. We have Sunday school for all ages. We will begin that again uh, next Sunday at 930 uh, to 1015. We're going to wait on our early service. We're not going to start that up right away. We're going to wait until more people are willing to come on back uh, to in-person worship before we begin that. I don't think we need it yet, um, but we will sometime. But Sunday school will begin next Sunday. And so we hope that uh, if you're interested in coming out, you'll come out and join us. Sunday school is always a good time for the kids to learn deeper about the Bible, but also for us adults. There's an adult class where we can discuss the word together and and uh, and that's really good. Um, and then on Wednesday, January 13th, so a week and a half from today, uh, we begin our midweek again. And so we have BCC kids, elementary school uh, age kids from 6 to 7 p.m. at the church uh, where uh, Jessica will do a program with them that will involve some fun games as well as some Bible learning. And uh, you can come out to that with your kids. That would be great. We also have our youth groups that begin that night. So break out. Uh, is our uh, junior high ministry begins at 545 goes to 715 every Wednesday at the Cove and then 730 to 845 is our high school group called Collide and uh, we have a way we do that social distanced as well as um, small groups kind of things that they do uh, and uh, it's really good and so Pastor RJ leads that and that's at the Cove and if the teens are willing and wanting to come on out to youth group and then we also have our small groups that begin that that day as well we have a couple small groups that meet online one that meets wednesday mornings for ladies and then we have two women's groups uh, that meet at six to seven o'clock at the church on wednesday nights which is the same time as the elementary school program so they can go to that when their kids are in their program and then we have a men's group which meets uh, with me at my house and we're studying the book of revelation and uh, that's going to be happening 6, 7 o'clock Wednesday nights, beginning again on the 13th. And I uh, hope you can come out to that, guys, if you would, if you would like to. Uh, and we do wear masks at those things, uh, at all those different programs uh, for now. And, and uh, we do our job of uh, trying to protect and keep everybody safe. And then today... I am going to begin in the sermon time, I'm going to begin a new sermon series uh, where I'm going to be looking at the names of Jesus that we find throughout Scripture. The Good Shepherd, the Lamb of God, the Bread of Life, the Light of the World. And today we're going to start with the first one, the a Cornerstone. Uh, that's a name that's given to the Lord in the Old and the New Testament, that He is our cornerstone, the rock beneath our feet, a sure foundation. And so we're going to look at that. In fact, in Isaiah 28, 16, it says, So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who, who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. We have a couple songs uh, by our worship team to lead us in in worship, and the words will be on the bottom of the screen. We have a kid's moment by Jessica, and then I'll give that sermon about the cornerstone. Hope you have a wonderful day.
let's turn our hearts toward worship. And let's strip away everything. Hear the voice of our God and enter into his presence today. looking forward to this brand new brand new year I love the start of the new year because it gives me time to kind of pause and reflect on the last year but then look forward to all the wonderful things that I'm looking forward to in the next year I also like to take just a few minutes and and spend time with God and really pray and ask him what he wants me to really focus in on this year and so I did that earlier and one thing I felt he really wanted me to focus on was the word encourage to be an encourager or to encourage others and so I wrote that word in my journal just to keep that the first thing in my mind that I want to encourage others. So first this year, I really want to encourage you. 
And what's so neat about this word is in the Bible is really the perfect place to show us about where the, about how to encourage. Because really God is the perfect encourager out there. There's verses in the Bible that tell us that his compassions and his love are new every morning ready for you. There's verses that tell us that he has started a good work in you, in you, and he will promise and he has promised that he will carry that out until the day it is perfect and wonderful and awesomely good in your life. There are so many wonderful promises like that that God wants to use to have you be encouraged because he is the God of encouragement. So my goal this year is really to encourage you, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but sometime throughout the year to be an encouragement to you. So maybe for you, your word this year might be something like encourage, but maybe you wanna take a few minutes yourself and think, hmm, what does God want me to focus on this year? So I'd suggest taking a few minutes, praying to God, reading in your Bible, having your parents read to you, but pick out something that you really think God wants you to focus on this year. Maybe it's encouragement. Maybe it's patience. Maybe it's trusting God no matter what. But whatever it is, take a few minutes and listen and hear from God so that he can make the 2021 year the best year you have ever had. All right. If you uh, have your Bibles there and you would like to follow along with me, I'm going to read uh, four short scripture verses uh, found in different places all with one consistent theme today, which we will look at, and, and that's going to be the word cornerstone and how Jesus is our cornerstone. And so the first uh, verse is in Isaiah 28, 16, and it says this. So this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone to be a sure foundation the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And then over to Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 to 44. It says, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who would produce with it fruit. He who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but he whom falls, it will be crushed. And then Acts chapter 4, beginning in uh, verse 8 and going to verse 12. This is now Peter. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called into account today for an act of kindness shown to a crippled man and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, by whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. The Lord is the stone that you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which one can be saved. And then the last verse from Ephesians 2, verses 19 to 22. Paul writes these words. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So this morning, I want to begin a new sermon series um, that will last a number of weeks, and it's on the names of Jesus. Uh, there are many names and titles that are given uh, to Jesus throughout Scripture that tell us a lot about who he is and what he has come to do in our life. Uh, but for example, the Bible calls Jesus the Good Shepherd, or the Light of the World, or the Lamb of God or the bread of life, the alpha, the omega, 
or here in these verses, the cornerstone. Each name is in another important and significant part of who Christ is and what he has come to be for you and me. And an area that we may need to trust him with and believe him to be for our lives. For these aren't just names and titles. These are areas and ways that we need to trust God with our life and put our faith in Jesus Christ. For example, I can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I can read about it in Psalm 23 and, and think it's all great. I can hear the story and the parable where it comes up. But the power and true impact of that name, shepherd, comes when by faith I allow Jesus to be my shepherd and trust him to lead and guide my life and listen for his voice and truly know that he is watching over me and my family. When I allow him to be the shepherd in my life, life goes better. And at different times in our life, we might find ourselves connected to one of the names or roles of, of Jesus more than another. When I am confused and searching for direction and the Lord being my shepherd is exactly what I need to hear and, and a voice that I need to listen for. When I have sinned and again realize my own guilt, the Lamb of God is what I need. When all hope seems gone and the world seems full of darkness, the light of the world <laughs> is what I need to remember in that moment. And so each week, you see, I want to focus in on another name of Jesus and what it truly means to pray to him and trust him to be all that he is in our life. So this first week, this first Sunday um, of this new year, I wanted to begin with what I think is one of the most significant names of Jesus. And that is the name Cornerstone. It comes up in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. That he is our cornerstone. In the scriptures I just read and many other places in the Bible. The Lord is called the rock. The sure foundation of our life. He is sure. I love that word. He is what holds us and sustains us. As the wind and the waves comes crashing in, He is sure you can trust when you rest in Him. We can trust our life to Him and to, to build our home and life upon His Word. It is sure. He is a sure foundation. And in fact, these verses, He's not just called the rock, you know, just any old stone, but specifically called the chief corner stone. In fact, our scripture puts it bluntly, either the Lord is the cornerstone of our lives or he is going to be a rock that we repeatedly trip and fall. You won't be able to escape Jesus. He's that important. So what exactly is a cornerstone? Well, a cornerstone uh, is the largest and most significant stone in a structure. Today, we would call it the foundation of a house. It may be unseen and below the surface, but it's the most important thing to get right when building a home. You can build a pretty exterior and detail your house all nice and fill your house with a whole lot of nice things. But if you didn't take the time to really set the foundation of the house and make sure that was right, then it's all going to come down. It was all for naught. You know, if you built your house on the sand... And not on a rock beneath it. When the wind and the rain comes, it won't last. I think of the Old Testament scripture where, where it says, Unless the Lord builds that house, its laborers build it in vain. You know, it, It's that chief cornerstone. Same with our life. Same with our society. Same with church. Same with family. What is the rock beneath our feet that we are truly trusting in? What is behind it all? If it isn't Jesus... It isn't sure. He is the sure foundation. You know, the decisions we make, who we are, what our purpose is in life, and what we believe in, in our faith and life. If it isn't resting in Jesus, then it isn't sure. He is that chief cornerstone we can count on. We can build our life upon. We know is truth. Who he is and what he has done is his teaching of, of God and, and, and how we live and where salvation is found and what our mission is, our faith. It's on him. You see, 
the foundation of, of how we teach our kids about life and God and, and who they are. It's got to come from him. What we instill in them of how we treat people and how we live our life and what we live for. It's, it's all built on him. In raising our kids, it's our most important role as parents. All the other stuff won't matter if the foundation we set for them isn't right. If the center, the chief cornerstone isn't Jesus in their life, then everything else we taught them is on shaky ground. Same for the church. The ministry we do in the church, it won't last and it won't work if it isn't built and centered upon Him and His Word and who He is and His power and His Spirit. We might sit and come out each week to a beautiful building and for a nice polished program and there might be a big crowd, but the church is on shaky ground if its foundation is not Jesus Christ. And His Word, His teachings, His Spirit, His mission, His love. I want to show you a picture of what a cornerstone looked like in Jesus' day. Just so you might have a picture of what we're talking about and what the people back then might have had in mind when this word was used. Here is a photo of a cornerstone. It's a stone that is literally here holding up the massive temple that is above it. The temple in the days of Jesus. This stone was carved from a quarry in the days of Jesus or just right before in the time of King Herod there. And it is in Jerusalem and you can go and see it. This stone is about 11 feet tall by 75 feet long by I don't even know how wide. It's utterly massive. It weighs I can't even imagine. And like the pyramids, it's a wonder how people even moved it into that spot. There is a quarry nearby of which it was cut from. And you can see the cut holes on the outside where historians believe that wood beams would have fit. And perhaps the stone was rolled and pushed or pulled or dragged by hundreds of people and animals into place. But this is a cornerstone. The cornerstone of a building, the temple which was built above it in the days of Jesus. Now, in the days of Jesus, it may have even been right at ground level, so it would have been visible, but we're not sure. In fact, in one of our scriptures that I read today from uh, Matthew 21, it was talking about Jesus in the temple, teaching the people there, and he's talking about the kingdom of God, and he quotes this verse about the cornerstone of which he is, the temple which will be built upon him. And my guess is that he is standing right near one of these large foundation stones as he points to it and uses it as an illustration. Saying that just like this temple needs a cornerstone or it's going to topple, so too the kingdom of God and that new work that he is doing in the world through me, that new temple the Lord is building, it's not going to be built of of stone, but of human hearts and people who all put their faith in Christ and His Word. And He's saying, I'm going to be that chief cornerstone this new work is going to be resting upon. And He's talking to the religious leaders and the Pharisees um, who are rejecting Him as the Messiah and the Savior. And all, even after all the miracles and the things that they have seen him do, still they wanted to keep to their traditions and they wanted to keep, you know, the power for themselves and, and not believe in him whom God sent. And so Jesus quotes this prophecy from Psalms and Isaiah when he says, the stones the builders would reject has become the chief cornerstone. The builders being the Jews and, and those religious leaders and, and, and the stone rejected, of course, being Jesus, God's own son. He is that very cornerstone of the whole thing that God is now doing in the world. Remove Jesus and the, the whole thing falls down. The whole system, the whole salvation and the whole mission. The cross, the resurrection, the, the Holy Spirit and the mission of God in, into the whole world. The, the most important and significant part of that is, is Christ. You can't just remove his name. You can't just remove what he has done. You can't remove his teachings and, and who he is or the whole thing will fall apart. 
Uh, you can build, you know, we can think about this in, in lots of different ways. You, you can build an impressive company, have the smarts to do all that. And, and you can build a life that gets great admiration and, and fame or riches. And you can build an impressive church and, and lots of people come. But if on the inside, if down deep, if even at that foundation level, if it's not Christ that is behind and that is working within your life and it is part of it, then it's a show and it's just a big, it won't make a, a lick of difference and it won't have eternal impact. Today, we need to remember that at the start of a new year as a church and as believers and as families. Do we have that sure foundation beneath our feet, our home, our life, our church? Is he our rock, you know, our refuge, our vision, our Lord in an often topsy and turvy world? Now, I'm a guy, if, if you know me, um, I like details. I get kind of distracted at times and focused on all the little details of things, you know. And I, and this comes out in, in, in one of my hobbies. I have told maybe you before, but I love model trains. It's a hobby of mine. I have a big model train in my basement. I have a couple photos here I wanted to show of it. Um, but I love making this thing. I, I love the art of it. I love making the town. I love making it look as realistic as I can. This, this little world that I have created in my basement. And Carrie says I like to control the world, you know, like, and so I make my own. But I, I just enjoy the art of making it, you know, and so I spend a lot of time just making it absolutely perfect. Well, this is like my third or fourth train layout that I have made, and I have learned a lot. Uh, over the years making, you know, the first and the second ones and, and so forth. And I can remember with my first and my second layout, I, I just jumped right in too fast. I rushed through all the bench work and the track and the parks that I didn't really like to spend time on so that I could spend all my time on the details of the town and, and all that stuff and buildings and the little people and the cars. And I'd spent days and hours, you know, uh, making sure all that was just right. And I had this Really nice layout, but I couldn't run the trains <laughs> because my electrical was all a mess and my track was laid so poorly and I didn't learn how to do it right or spend time laying it. And so the train was constantly derailing and running into those nice buildings and the bench work was rushed and so it was even falling down. And people would come and see it, you know, and, and up top it looked nice and they would admire all the buildings and the scene and but then they would always want to see the train go round, of course. And I embarrassingly couldn't show them because it wouldn't run. Or it even wouldn't make one lap around without falling off. I had spent all my time on that which was visible and none on the foundation. How can we do the same thing in our lives you know, I can care so much about the appearance of things, the pretty house, the making sure ourselves all look good on the outside, but on the inside a mess and a home that's fallen apart. Like anyone, we can get busy with the urgent things or the cares and the worries of this world or wants and running our kids to all of this stuff, but miss what's truly important. It can be left out. In our marriage, we can miss that rock beneath our feet and it crumble. We need Christ. <laughs> As parents, in our desire to give our kids every opportunity and help them grow and become all that they can be, we can sign them up for this and that and want to get them good grades and get them braces to have nice smiles and encourage them towards good jobs and all that's great stuff. But let us not forget building in them a strong foundation in Jesus Christ. <laughs> that bench top for our kids. All the pretty stuff we did on the top won't matter if we haven't taken the time to help them lay good track. You know, teaching them how to have a relationship with Christ every day and know where their salvation and help is from. Or the train won't run. You know, it'll derail over and over again. If we haven't connected them to the church or helped them learn how to pray or to live by the Spirit, then like my poor electrical work... <laughs> There'll be no power in their lives. We'll have failed them as parents. Either the Lord is the cornerstone of our life, or he is a rock which we will repeatedly trip and fall. Peter said in Acts to those who had arrested him and for preaching and healing in the name of Jesus, he stands before that Sanhedrin and 
but he stands on the rock. And he says, if we are being called into account for an act of kindness done to this man in Jesus' name, then let it be, because there is no other name upon which we can be saved. He is sure as he stands there, confident of who he is and what he believes, able to face whatever consequence of the world, because he knows and rests on him whom his life is secure upon. Faith in Christ, you see, it cannot just be another thing in our life. We can't just have this little religious segment of our life. You know, yeah, we go to church too. It can't be just another thing in our life. It's got to be the very foundation of our life or everything else begins to crumble. There is a difference. And so is Christ just another thing in your life? that you try to fit in, or is he the very foundation of everything that you are and what you do? As we start this new year, think and pray about that. Even in your Christian faith, is Jesus still the Lord and the rock in your life? You know, about behind everything that you believe and how you live, or are you being led these days by other things that are more shaky? When Jesus was teaching on this to the religious leaders, the temple and the, the religious system, you know, that they had around them was, was pretty on the outside. The temple with all of its gold and the columns, but it was empty on the inside. It was rituals only and it wouldn't last. Christ came to, to go and enter into our heart to do for them and on the cross what they could not do for themselves and so he was trying to, to tell him, I'm the chief cornerstone. I'm, I, I'm the thing that, that you build, that God's going to build this new temple upon. Paul says in Romans 9.30, What can we say the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have now obtained it first, a righteousness that comes by faith. But Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, has not attained it. For they pursued it not by faith in Christ, but as if it were obtained by their own works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chief cornerstone that causes men to stumble, a rock that makes them fall. But the one who trusts in him, Christ, will never be put to shame. If our faith, our life is built on our own good deeds and works, our traditions and our rituals and our sense of self, and absent of Christ, then it's on shaky ground. And it's no foundation at all. Either the Lord is the cornerstone of our life, or he is a rock over which we will trip and fall. Where is God speaking to you about this today? You know, one way for me uh, that it's speaking to me is I've kind of gotten away from my daily devotions. If it wasn't for my job as pastor, uh, you know, keeping me accountable to being in his word, you know, I think I'd slip. I've gotten away from the discipline of solitude and prayer and study each day. I've gotten too busy or bored or tired. Of it. And, and I can feel it in my personal life when I walk away from that time with God. I can see it where I begin to lose patience more and I begin to worry more. That daily time with the Lord is me resting on that rock, returning there if I have wandered. It, it, that reading and reflecting and journaling in his word is very essential to my life. I think straight and, and act with gentleness and patience when things, you know, aren't going right. I do that. I have that stronger faith. Being able to handle bigger problems when I've got my feet squarely upon that foundation of Jesus Christ. So Jesus you know, he told the parable once there of two people who built their homes, one on the sand and one on the rock. And, and he said, when the storms come, not if, but when they come, the one who built their house on the rock would be able to withstand it. And he says, Jesus said, the one on the rock is the one who hears my word and puts it into practice. He is the cornerstone of our life and our salvation. A few takeaways uh, for today as you begin your new year. First one is this, Isaiah 28, 16. Write it down on a piece of paper, put it on your phone, memorize it. Isaiah 28, 16. It says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts in me will never be dismayed. Write that down. 
underline it in your Bible. Remind yourself of it daily. Isaiah 28, 16. You know, it says, see, I lay a stone. In other words, God is saying, I'm going to lay this stone for you. You can't. I'm going to. It's going to be my son, Jesus. It says he's a tested stone, meaning the word the Lord was tried in every way, tested and tempted just like us, but proved true without sin. He overcame, did what we couldn't. He was even tested in the greatest possible way upon the cross, but overcame and rose again. It says he is a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The word sure means you can have confidence in him. It will not fall. His blood is enough for your sins. It is sure. Your faith in him is enough. He is enough. He is sure. He is certain. He won't prove false. He won't let you down on judgment day or even today. He won't change his mind. He won't forget his promises. There's nothing you face that is too much for him. He is sure. I love that word sure. He will be able to do that which he has willed. His word is sure. His presence is sure. You need not fear. In a world of so much uncertainty, he is sure. The same yesterday, today, and forever. A sure foundation you can build your life upon. So first takeaway is remember Isaiah 28, 16. Keep it up all year. The second takeaway, though, is that Peter, as he stood before that Sanhedrin, before that court, he reminds us that there are going to be people, for sure there's going to be people, who reject Jesus. Even those who should have recognized him and accepted him didn't. But Peter, even in that context, says, but I will. I know salvation is in no other name. Peter says this standing before the mighty courts, but he's not shaken because his faith is in Jesus. Not in his acceptance by those or his fears of what might happen to him. It's in Jesus. And I need to remember that entering a new year. That whatever may come, my hope and salvation is secure. It's in Jesus. It's in him. I stand before the courts. One day I'll stand before my God. My good works won't be enough to save me, but my faith in him will be. For my righteousness is in him, and he is enough. And there's no other name for by which one can be saved. Let's not be afraid to say that. You know, that might not be a popular thing today, that there's no other name but Jesus Christ upon which you can be saved. Might not be popular to say that, but let's not be afraid to do so. Peter wasn't. Jesus wasn't just one way to heaven. He was the only way. And Peter knew it. The gift of God. And even amongst, when he's amongst those that are learned and and more studied in religious things and his own courts, Peter stood on that truth of Christ alone. And that faith and conviction compelled him to spread the word and to speak it boldly. Not trying to offend, but hoping to save. My son, he convicted me of this lately. He said to me very honestly, he said, Dad, don't be afraid to speak it. If they don't know why they need to be saved, then they won't think they need Jesus as much as they do. My son said that. For our sin separates us from God, but Christ saves us. He's the only one who can. Once we truly see our sin and the consequences of it eternally, We will see both the love and salvation of Christ for what we truly need and why he is everything in our life. And we aren't just called to be good people or better people. We're called to believe and follow Jesus. The way opened for us, the truth and the life. And there is no other name upon which one can be saved. Sure, there are some great truths we can glean from other religions or poets or politicians or people in the media. From time to time, they may say some really good things. God speaks in mysterious and multiple ways. In the Bible, he spoke out of a donkey in one story. He spoke using a star to guide the wise men. He even spoke through a wicked king in one story. And in Acts, we read how he even used an idol in a pagan town that they had made to an unknown god. God used it to help Paul share about Jesus. God uses many things, but he only ever draws people to his one self. Christ alone is the salvation of God. Salvation found in no other name. That's our cornerstone. That's what it means to to have him as our cornerstone. You can't just replace him with something else. 
There's no other God, no other Lord, no other baptism, no other faith, no other salvation that can save you from your sins. And then third and final takeaway for me for this week as we begin our year is from the name Cornerstone is how Peter and Paul talk about the church and how it is this new temple that God is building, not of literal stones, you know, but made up of people all around the world. And how Peter says we are living stones built upon the chief cornerstone, all held together to be a place where God dwells. We find our place and our work in this world in him. Our purpose. All who have confessed Christ as Lord have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit that they are to use for his glory. They are the body of Christ. We, each one of us, gifted with something that God gives that we might serve and to be his witness in the world. We're a part of that work that he is doing. In him, we are all joined together. We have community. We have family. We are the body of Christ, belonging to God, declaring his praises. And this is another good reminder as we begin 2021 that the church is not a building or simply a Sunday morning program alone. The church is people held together by a shared faith in Christ, built upon him and his salvation and his message sent to do his mission. And whether we find ourselves quarantined for a time or, or able to get together back in person, this is not what makes us church. Jesus does. He is the cornerstone. And he has not been moved. He is what holds us together, gives our life mission and purpose, and we don't stop just because we're in a pandemic. We don't fail to be the church or to care for one another or to reach out to our world with love just because we can't see each other every Sunday. Are you kidding? We're not on a break. <laughs> we're more than that. We're the people of God standing upon Jesus Christ. <laughs> If you're at home and, and you haven't been to the physical building of church in a while, don't forget who you are or to whom you belong or, or the people for whom you belong. You're the body of Christ, together the temple of God. He dwells with you. Even if over Zoom, even if over small group or in a letter, you got a work to do. <laughs> Back in Jesus' day, shortly after Jesus died on the cross and rose and ascended into heaven, the message began to spread. And during that time, the Romans destroyed that glorious big temple in Jerusalem. But they could not stop God or God's people. Christians continued to meet. They met in homes. They met in secret. Even when they were killed, uh, people killed the disciples. Somebody always stepped up, picked up the, the thing and carried on. The mission went on and the message spread to more and more homes. And the Holy Spirit continued to move forward. Even in times of war in our history, persecution or scattering in our history, the church never fell, never dissolved because the Lord is the cornerstone and it will not be shaken. And you're a part of that mission in the family. If you've put your faith in Christ, you are the church. So how are you continuing to be the church in these times? Don't wait until you come back to do what you have been called to do. How are you serving and praying, supporting and gathering together with the people of God for encouragement, for the mission of God? How are you loving your neighbors or sharing the message? Jesus told Peter, upon the rock I'll build my church and not even the gates of hell will be able to stand against it. Don't worry. The church ain't going nowhere. So first, memorize Isaiah 28, 16 and know the Lord is your sure foundation. Second, like Peter, be bold in your witness and exclusive in your faith in this way that the salvation of God is found in no other name but him. He is the cornerstone of our salvation. And third, the church is the people of God. Built upon him, our cornerstone, each of us filled with the Holy Spirit to continue his mission and message in the world. Just because we're in a pandemic and we can't always meet, don't forget the mission, the purpose, the people. How we do things may change from time to time, but our foundation is sure. Christ is our cornerstone. Amen. Have a great day.